1945, 51 states signed the founding charter that established the United Nations. The charter gave the United States, China, Russia, France and the United Kingdom permanent membership and veto powers in the Security Council. The UN now has 193 member states that coexist, compete and cooperate in a world that is very different from the one that existed at the end of the Second World War. The world's population has increased threefold. Regions such as Africa have evolved from colonies to independent states and the Cold War has ended. The 21st century has also seen a diffusion of power away from states, as well as a shift in material power and influence from the countries bordering the North Atlantic to those bordering the Pacific and Indian Oceans. History speaks to the risks inherent in such seismic changes in power relations between states. These elevated risks are worsened by major powers, such as the USA, turning away from multilateralism and collaboration. Multipolarity without multilateralism is a dangerous trend. Beyond the threat of war between nuclear-armed states, future global challenges include the security impact of climate change, the threat of pandemics, nuclear terrorism, and organized crime, including cybercrime. But the intergovernmental negotiations on reforming the Security Council are stuck. And outside of the developing world, the entire United Nations system is rapidly losing its relevance. There is no prospect of bridging the divide between countries and negotiating groups, such as the G4, the Uniting for Consensus grouping, the 54-member Africa group, the Small Island Developing States grouping, and the five permanent members. Rather than seeking a compromise position between these groups, Elect the Council proposes that regions such as Africa, Grulac and others work outside of the intergovernmental negotiating process in New York to develop a detailed set of proposals informed by a collaborative approach to global security and not national interests. Once there is sufficient support, supporters would table a single comprehensive amendment to the Charter of the United Nations in the General Assembly. Looking into the future, we recognize an emerging distribution of power consisting of two or three global powers with significantly more influence and capacity than any others. We also recognize the desire in some regions, such as Europe and Africa, to act as a coalition within the Council. A reformed Council also needs to recognize the role of regional powers and their ability to shape outcomes, although such leadership is contested. Finally, it's important to enlarge the Council to represent each electoral region on a proportional basis. We propose that each of the five electoral regions nominate three states for every 22 countries in its group for elections in the General Assembly. Elected countries will serve for three-year terms. During an 18-year transition period, the Council will immediately expand the number of elected states from 10 to 21 plus the current five permanent members who would remain on the Council with enhanced voting powers but no veto. Five countries will be elected for immediately renewable terms and 16 other countries for non-renewable rotational seats. During this transition period, the rules of procedure would be finalized, among others. After the 18-year transition, the Council would consist of three types of members. The first would be states, or coalitions of states, that each accounted for 5% of the global economy, contributed 5% of the UN budget, and had 3% of the global population. These countries, or coalitions, would automatically qualify to serve on the Council while they met all three of these criteria. Each of their votes would count for three. An example of such possible coalitions could be states from Europe, South and Central America, or Africa. 24 members of the Council would be elected in the General Assembly to serve for three-year terms. Eight regional powers would be elected to serve on the Council for immediately renewable terms, and an additional 16 states would be elected to serve for non-renewable terms. Elections would take place in the General Assembly. Global powers or members of a global coalition in the Council would not be allowed to vote in these elections, and would also lose their membership in the various voting regions. 
Elect the Council further proposes that each electoral region apply minimum criteria for candidate states that wish to stand for election to the Security Council. These criteria are experience and capacity, financial good standing with the UN, willingness to shoulder additional financial contributions, and respect for open, inclusive, and accountable governance and international human rights standards. We also propose a 20 year freeze on additional Chapter 7 resolutions on specific contentious issues, as well as a review process every 30 years. Other recommendations include measures to break procedural deadlocks and much more. Even a reformed Security Council will not be able to mediate or prevent conflict between great powers such as China, the USA, and India. But it will help manage the hot, crowded, and often violent world we live in, and for issues such as Syria, South Sudan, and North Korea. Despite its many flaws and imperfections, a legitimate and effective Security Council is fundamental to a rules based global order and to the maintenance of international peace and security. Without reform, the UN Security Council will eventually become irrelevant. There is far too much at stake. For the impasse to continue.